It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott's here. Mary Jo Foley's at Nokia World in London. We've got the latest Nokia phone news and a whole lot more. Windows Weekly coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 232, recorded October 27th, 2011. Mango is to tango. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Go to Assist Express. Being in IT and not using the right tools can be disastrous. That's why you need Go to Assist, the leader in remote support. Try it free at gotoassist.com slash windows. And by Carbonite Online Backup. Automatic, continual, and unlimited backup for your computer files. Just $59 a year. Try it free at Carbonite.com. Use the offer code WINDOWS to get two bonus months with purchase. And by the New Egg Gadget Trade Insight, powered by Gazelle. Trade in your used gadgets today at Newegg.com slash trade and receive a New Egg gift card. That's Newegg.com slash trade. It's time for Windows Weekly. Yes, I'm back, and so are Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley to talk about the latest Windows stuff. Paul Therott, of course, the editor-in-chief of the super site for Windows at winsupersite.com. Can you hear it? Can you hear that? What? <laughs> we got. <laughs> I think we got giant rats on the roof. Oh. Their tails. I could just hear their ratty tails going. Rah, rah. Anyway, Windows Super Site, Super Site for Windows, uh, winsupersite.com. He's also the editor, uh, news editor for Windows IT Pro. <laughs> oh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. No, and of course, the author of the great Windows Phone Secrets, which. Uh, it, more secrets will be revealed today. Ha 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 ha. Actually, that's true. It's true. It's true. Also with us from London, where she's at Nokia World, Mary Jo Foley of AllAboutMicrosoft.com. Hi, Mary Jo. Hi, Leo. Are you cold in London? I am kind of cold. Um, it's been rainy, gray, but yeah, it's a little my hotel room, so I'm kind of bundled up. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> okay. So uh, you, you're there for Nokia World. Yes, I've been at Nokia World um, for the past two days. And we finally see C-Ray. Yes, C-Ray is out, now known as the Lumia 800. That explains a lot, because we heard the 800, and I thought, well, Nokia already has an 800, the, N the N800. Mm -hmm. So the Lumia 800, now I understand. And it is the same hardware, is it not, as the N9? Um, Mostly the same. There's no front-facing camera on the uh, on the new hmm. Windows Phone. Is that because Windows Phone doesn't support that? No, it they is just, not because they, of that. They just decided not to. Well, the way I, I asked some people about it here at the show, and they said because Nokia was hurrying to get a couple of phones out this year and, and beat expectations, that they just didn't have time to kind of arrange all the innards to work with a front-facing camera. So it can be supported, and maybe it even will be on the first phone we get in the U.S., but it's not on the ones that are going to be out this year. So we're not going to get it till 2012. We, When I say we, I mean the U.S. is not going to get it until 2012. Correct. Yeah. Sometime in early... Uh-oh. And is it uh, Verizon, or did they say? Who's it going to be on? AT&T? No, they, they didn't tell us anything about the carriers, but it was funny. Um, a couple of people spotted some Verizon wireless hmm. uh, folks at the show hmm. um, wearing their Verizon badges. So hmm. everybody's kind of speculating, hmm, maybe Verizon will get it. Um, but I think Stephen Elop, you know, who's the head of Nokia, somebody asked him and he said, we're talking to all four carriers in the U.S. Yeah, so, why wouldn't they? they, they have, they're on all four carriers now with all the other phones. Why not? Yep. Uh, Microsoft is, so why not have a Nokia? I mean, certainly Nokia has deals with everybody, so. So, uh, do you like this phone? I like it. Um, it felt almost anticlimactic. I don't know if Paul felt the same, but when I finally okay. saw it, I'm like, there it is. We've seen leaked screenshots. Right. We've seen the name leaked and all. But, you know, when you get to actually hold it and feel it and pick it up and, and play around with it a little bit, it's like, okay, there's a really well-made Windows phone. Yay. 
That's yes. exciting. Yeah, I, I, right. It's like the Windows phone that can compete with the iPhone 4S on design. You know, it feels high quality. Yeah. You know? Now, a lot of the uh, Windows phones we have today and, and Android phones are, you know, they're plastic. Right. Which is, you know, good and bad, right? I mean, one nice thing about the Focus I have is you could drop the thing and it explodes all over the floor and you put it back together and you're, all, you're ready to <laughs> you go. Just, you just snap it back together. You, know, you really do. It just yeah. it bounces right back, no problem. But, you know, I think the nice thing about this is it gives you that really high quality phone experience that we really didn't have before. Yeah. And there's another model, too. There's the um, Lumia 710, which is a little lower end, kind of like, I guess, a mid, mid-range mid kind of phone. And um, that one feels more, um, a little more plasticky. It's it's not, a, you know, as solid a phone and as designer a phone. But they're trying to hit all different price, price points. So, right. you know, they're going to be coming in. In the U.S., they're saying they're going to have a, quote, portfolio of phones. So there may be even more than two. There may be multiple price points, all different kinds of phones, when we finally get them. So uh, it, it, it looks very much like the N9. Is uh, I'm looking at a picture on Engadget. It's blue. Uh, is that metal, the blue part? Yeah. And then a glass yeah, front, it's a, kind of curved glass front, it looks mm -hmm. like. I think it is a curved front, yeah. yeah. And it looks very thin. But, you know, on the N9... It is. It's very. It's thin. It's not as thin as the iPhone, but it's it's still thin and it feels good. It it just is a well. Like when you hold it, you're like, there's a well-made phone. Yeah. You know, the, on the N9, where the search button is, on the Windows Phone, that's that's where the front-facing camera is. So you know, you could see. Okay, maybe they didn't have time to kind of switch that out because they had to put the search button. <laughs> right. Where the camera is. You know. Yeah, I'm actually looking at this. It's kind of interesting. There looks like there's a, there's a, there's a. Those are, I presume, not mechanical, but uh, they're, nor are they on screen. They're capacitance buttons at the bottom. Three of them, a, uh, a back arrow, a home, you know, the Windows key, the search key. And then, it, uh, then oh, I guess, okay, so I see that right-facing arrow at the top, but that's on the screen. That's part of the screen because it's right under the time there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, it, has, yeah no, it has all the standard Windows phone. Like. It's just a standard Windows phone. Yeah. Got it. It looks great. It uh, yeah, 1.4 nice. gigahertz Qualcomm CPU. Is it dual dual core? No. No. It's not dual single core. core. So, but you yeah, know, Microsoft. About that. Do, you, do you think that's a problem? They talked about that at the show because they said, you know, everybody else is like, "Where's your dual core? Where's your dual core?" But I think they rightfully point out that people don't complain about the performance a lot of Mango phones. You know, the way they've yeah. optimized it is to take advantage of the graphics processor, right? So. The, this is something that's different from how other smartphones work. And that's why they aren't right now dual core, but they still can compete pretty favorably performance wise with the dual core phones from other companies. I think they're accurate. In fact, I don't think people complain about phone performance much at all anymore. I mean, that, yeah. that's kind of a thing of the past. All the phones are decently fast. Maybe on Android. Some the, the, new ones, like, the new ones. The newer yeah. ones, yeah. 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 yeah and they it, said, also. Sorry. Go ahead, Paul. Sorry. No, I was just going to point out that uh, the first <laughs> gen uh, Windows phones are all one gigahertz, and this is a 1.4 gigahertz phone. So uh, it seems like there's probably some headroom there too, performance-wise, on this phone. Yeah, and they they also said um, at the conference they're exploring coming out with some CDMA phones for the U.S. and LTE phones next year too. So you know they're they're thinking about all the different ways they could get in the U.S. market with different kinds of phones on different carriers that will be of interest to all different kinds of customers. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Good thing. And the low-end phone, will they sell that in the U.S. or is that going to be? I think that one is going to be in the U.S. because when you go to Nokia's U.S. site, that one comes up, but the 800 does not. Oh. And they're definitely going to have multiple phones in the U.S. And they, like Mary Jo said, there's going to be LTE devices, CDMA devices, um, I wouldn't be surprised to discover that the second phone is, in fact, a modified version of the 800 that does have a front-facing camera that, and possibly those LTE slash CDMA innards. Um, so I think we're going to see some changes there. But right now, yeah, definitely the, the mid-market with the uh, 710, it looks like it is coming to the U.S. just based on the fact that you can read about it on their site. Mm -hmm. And the other one you cannot, so... Yeah, one of the most interesting things to me, though, about the launch was kind of what, you know, what differentiates the Nokia Windows phones from the other yeah. non-Nokia yeah. phones. And um, Nokia came out with a few apps that are 
just for the Nokia phones. Um, so, you know, one of those is something they call Nokia Music, which is basically their equivalent to Zoom and Zoom Pass. It's a it's a music service. It's <sighs> it's not something you buy as a subscription service, but why, why are, are these, you sighing? Well, I'm just saying, why do these people <laughs> launch their own music service? Aren't there enough music services? Why can't you just use Zoom? I don't understand. Well, okay, so as people have pointed out to me, uh, Zoom is not available everywhere. So right. one of the things that Nokia has in place is these agreements in all the countries that they're going to sell in where they can have the service, you know. And I, I'm not positive, but it seems to me that Nokia Music is a lot like um, Spotify maybe or, or Pandora in that it's a streaming radio type thing, but you also have the opportunity to buy songs from their store. Um, so it's not exactly like uh, Zoom. Like and Rhapsody. Well, but it's free. Oh, it's free. Yeah. So yeah. the streaming is free. Yep. Oh, yep. that's interesting. Yeah. So, so I mean, you get you know, it's just no sort disincentive. of disincentive. There's no disincentive to join to join it because you're not paying any yeah. money for it. All right. Well, I don't think see. anyone's going to pick Nokia because of this, but it's a nice thing that you get, right? You know, with Nokia. And the streaming quality is good. Or, uh, I mean, it's free. How are they doing yeah. that? <laughs> How bad could it be? It's free. How bad could it be? <laughs> Seriously, I mean, uh, they must be. They're subsidizing it, obviously. Yeah. And the other thing they're doing is, you know, letting people uh, create their own playlists from the music that they hear and then download those playlists to their phones so they can use it offline. Um, so they have a lot of nice little features. You know, somebody pointed out to me today on Twitter, they said what they have in their music service is very um, local specific music, which is a good thing. Again, you know, it's it, they, they really know how to target markets where Microsoft really hasn't figured it out yet so they know you know in India or in Hong Kong or in Taiwan here's what people want to have on their music service and they customize it for that yeah. so that's pretty cool yeah so it's very it's chauvinistic and insular of me to even complain I apologize <laughs> I'm a fool <laughs> I'm an American that should say everything you need to know yeah, yeah they, had, they had a couple other apps though too that were pretty interesting they had the um Turn by turn drive. Uh, the Avi. No, what do they call it? They call I think they call Avi it drive. Map. Oh, it's something else. Yeah. Oh. Um, it's based on their maps, um, but it it's a different kind of service where it actually reads you the turn by turn directions hmm. on the. So that's their own thing that only is on their phones. I'd also. like to read you some directions <laughs> first. <laughs> Shake well before opening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's nice. Yeah, uh, yeah this a, is, a, I think, one of the reasons that yeah. Nokia of late, and certainly with smartphones, has not been well accepted in the U.S. It feels foreign. It feels Dutch or something. You know what I'm saying, Paul? Paul, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> it doesn't feel American. I think the phrase you're looking for is Nordic. It's Nordic. <laughs> it's Euro <laughs> trash. It's not something yeah. we, yeah, I think that that's the problem. It's like Ikea furniture. Yes. This is, you can't quite put your, fin your finger on it, but it's got that kind of vibe. You, you're not like us. You're not yeah. like us. You're not. Well, please, enjoy the meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> I know, again, once again, proving myself the ugly American. But I, I'm just being honest here. I think yeah. that that's a little bit of um, a difficulty for them. They oh, feel it, nice. I, actually, they feel like, you know, Nordic. The other thing that people here don't seem to understand is how big Nokia is right. elsewhere in the world. We don't so, get that at all. You know, we dump on Nokia a lot. It's a lot, you know, it's really easy to look at market share numbers and say, oh, you know, these guys are falling every quarter now. And, you know, uh, people don't, you know, people here have an affinity as people do with all these first world countries. You know, France is like this. Uh, I'm sure Japan is as well, where, you know, we love Apple stuff. You know, people just go nuts over Apple stuff. But, you know, people don't understand that uh, that kind of relationship with the device is something that has existed for a long time, and it happens with Nokia devices in other parts of the world. Well, and, it, it uh, goes both ways. I mean, um, uh, uh, I, and, I, and I have to say, I've been a Nokia user for a long time. I love Symbian. Um, I have the N9, actually. Uh, I have the N8. But um, late, of late, they felt a little, um, I think it's in the smartphone era. They, yeah. and, and Apple doesn't do all that well in the, uh, the rest of the world. Well, I guess it does now, but it didn't for a long time do that well in the rest of the world. Oh, it's too expensive. Yeah. Just for price? Yeah. I think, I think so. there was also a little bit of, um, I don't know. It didn't, it, people, I can remember going in, Fr being in France in the, uh, in the late 80s, 
and you just it, you couldn't find you know I needed a power adapter or something you couldn't find an Apple store you couldn't to to save your life you could wander all of Paris there was some little sure. hole in the wall and yeah, now you can find one in the Louvre yeah you know. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was just in Paris, and I made this observation to uh, the guy I was with. And actually, I, I mentioned this in an article today as well, coincidentally. But in, you know, as, I, as you do, I'm sure, when you're out and about in the world, you sort of look at what other people use, you know, whether it's computers on a plane or yeah. smartphones on a train or whatever it is. And you sort of, you know, if it's convenient, you'll, you'll look and see what's on the screen. And, you know, what do people do with their things and all that? And I was really interested in Paris to notice that r roughly 50%, a, a good 50% of everyone I saw with a phone had an iPhone. It was yeah. astonishing oh, yeah. uh, market share, or usage share. Um, but the thing that blew me away even more than that was that if you broke down the remainder of the people with phones, 50% of the remainder, or about 25% overall, had Blackberries, which I, I didn't expect to see a single Blackberry in mm -hmm. France. Mm -hmm. And the other 50% had those little candy bar or slider phones, like the really old-fashioned non-smartphone phones. Hmm. I did not, I don't think I saw a single Android device the entire time I was in Paris. And that kind of blew me away. Now, it might be because it's a big city, and you would assume that businesses or even governmental workers would have these Blackberries, and maybe that's just the fact of life of Paris, you know, and that that would be different out in the, uh, in the rural areas of the country. But it was a really interesting mix. It wasn't like that in London. You know, in London, you do see a lot of Android, and you see a lot of other phones, but... Um, it was, just, it was interesting, and, and I think those slider candy bar type phones, I bet a lot of those were Nokia devices. I just mm -hmm. don't recognize them, you know, because mm -hmm. we don't really have those. Yeah, there. they're kind of, yeah, I'm sure all of them were. Yeah, but I don't think of those as smartphones, you know. They're not. And, and the other phones that uh, Nokia announced at this show, whose name now is escaping me, um, are those kinds of, well, they're actually, they're kind of bridging a gap now. They're, they're sort of smartphones. You know, they have internet services on them. They have... Uh, you know, often we'll have the, the physical keyboards, which some people still like. And they're just, a, you know, kind of a different kind of device. So it's an 800 by 480 display, AMOLED, uh, Zeiss lens on the other side. How, how many megapixels on that camera, Mary Jo? It's eight? Eight. There's eight, eight. on the... And on it's the an F2.2, which is really fast. Yeah. And that's, is that what they have on the 4S? Is that the same? I think it's 2.4 on the 4S. 2.4. And which is that 2.4 better? I don't even know which one. No, 2.4 is worse. It's, uh, I mean, it's an improvement uh, over the old iPhone 4. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's still not the same. I mean, that's, that is, I, I think F2.2 is probably the fastest camera phone out there, I would guess. Uh, Nokia's always done great cameras, though, in their phones. That's, that's the one reason I'm really looking forward, yeah. uh, you know, to that phone. That's the one thing I want. Yeah, that's is an excellent yeah. camera. I want, a, I want a phone that has a great camera in it so I don't have to carry a camera on. So do you think, Mary Jo, this will be a better phone for Mango than the existing phones? Well, they're playing it up as the, for, the epitome of Mango phone. <laughs> you know, the the yeah. Mango I mean, phone. I wonder yeah. how this Samsung is, feels about If you want a Mango that. phone, this is the one. They, they kept saying at the show, you know. I, I, um, they described it as the first real Windows phone. That cracks me up. first real. That, I, that's annoying. I, I'm sure they're just laughing themselves to sleep over there at HTC and Samsung, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, you know, I think there's definitely going to be a market for it. It's kind of like the premium phone right now in, in among all of the Windows phones, I feel like. Premium um, price? Um, well, we're going to see what they do with pricing. <laughs> um, yeah, in, so in, somebody in did a markets. comparison. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Guardian. The Guardian did that, right? Did yeah. They? yeah, 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 yeah. And it was, um, you know, how much different carriers are going to subsidize the phone in Europe. Um, and, you know, they made the case that in some places it's actually going to be cheaper than the iPhone 4S because of the carrier um, mm -hmm. uh, subsidies. Um, in other places it's going to cost more. So in the U.S. It's, it'll be very interesting to see what they do with the pricing because, you know, we have a whole different set of pricing expectations and right. carrier tie-ins and lock-ins than they do in Europe. So... It'll, it'll be real real interesting to see how they do that here. Yeah. They, they have to do it the they way have they do, to do it. it. <laughs> they can't come here and say, no, we are European. We do things differently. You know, it, ha it has to work the way we, we need it to work. Otherwise, <laughs> no, it just it has to. Right. It does. I agree. And, you know, they, they made a point of saying, you know, we're, we're, we haven't been players in the U.S. smartphone market. We, we just have not. So we're having to kind of come in as the new kids and we're ready to be very aggressive you know, we're studying the markets. We're ready to do something that's going to be, you know, what the market wants. And we're, and we're going to come in, you know, spend a lot of money on 
advertising and marketing and that's exactly what the phones need right now so that's all all good if they follow through on what they're saying you know what would have even been better is if they had done it in time for the holidays <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, I mean, yeah, I, I, point, yeah. <laughs> yes, I appreciate that these things take time, but I, I, you know, and I sort of understand why they want to tackle Europe and Asia first, but um, Windows Phone needs some kind of jolt of adrenaline here in the United States and, and waiting until February, March, whatever it is, is it's too bad, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can see this in some ways in that uh, the Windows Phone challenge that um, Bedford wanted to do. Uh, mm -hmm. What's his name? Brandon. Boston. <laughs> Brandy. <laughs> Brandy. <laughs> Is that uh, he was, you know, and I agreed, and he was all excited. And, well, we don't want to send you the we, a phone to, and so, what, what I'm not going to well, get Well, no, it but I, I, I think that the moment he'd said that, there were no second-gen devices Well, that's what I'm saying. So, and there's, and so there's, whether it's, yeah, but, it, I mean, there are second-gen HTC, second-gen Samsung. Oh, all right. Well, I think any, any second-gen device, I, I, I certainly... Some of the phones we all already know about here in the U.S. have front-facing cameras, for example, have bigger screens, you know, have some of these features that are just missing on the Nokia devices. So the I was sort of expecting that when these phones came out, this would be the obvious choice. Right. right. And it's not so obvious, and, and that's too bad because uncertainty is not really what I was shooting for, you know, <laughs> for this release. So I guess we'll see what happens. I'm shooting for uncertainty. I don't know about yeah. you. <laughs> I want to wait. I want to wait to see what happens and then wait some more. <laughs> well, I mean, his the kind of the window of opportunity already ran out. Because remember, I said, "Well, yeah, I'll be glad to do it until the iPhone 4S comes out." Yep. So, I, <laughs> and he didn't say anything. So I don't know. I don't know. Right. Um, I'll, I'm, I'll still I'll still try it. If, um, I'll probably yeah, buy one. You. Which one? Should, okay, let's let me ask this then, Paul. What should I get if I want to? I can't answer this question because I don't. I need to know what Nokia is going to sell in the U.S. and when. Right. Uh, looking at those, I, I'd have to go back and look at the list. I mean, we know the the three phones that are coming to AT&T. So you're saying, you're saying these are so good that I should wait. I shouldn't look at what's out right now from Samsung. Well, let's put it this way. Let, what if the phone? What if the other phone that comes to the U.S. is an 800 with a front-facing camera? The the other issue, by the way, with these devices is. They only have a set amount of memory, and there's no option for others, you know, other RAM or uh, storage. They still component. haven't solved that SD card issue? No, so they don't have expandable memory, and the low-end one has 8, and the high-end one has 16 gigs, but if you wanted to buy a 32-gig version of the Nokia right now, you can't. Mm. So mm. that's too bad. And you can't add your own. No. Yeah, I got a 64-gig iPhone 4S. Sure. I don't want to use it all. <laughs> I got it. It's a lot of storage for a little girly phone, but okay. <laughs> it's true. No, but but there you go. It's available. It's available. That's great. Yeah. That's great if you want it. Um, LTE. Is this a little bit of a surprise? They're, they're going to have LTE. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah, See, I think what's going to happen, I, I wonder if, too, the Nokia release in the U.S. is going to be tied to some future software update. Um, Andy Lee's talked a few weeks back about uh, dual core support and LTE support coming in the future for Windows Phone in, in 2012. And maybe that's part of this tiered release, you know, that there'll be a, a version of uh, Windows Phone that comes out at the same time as these Nokia devices that just adds that stuff or adds one of those two things. Um, yeah, I tried, to ask, <laughs> I tried to ask them if anything they were doing was tied to Tango. And um, I got to ask Joe Belfiore this at the show, you know, who's who's the corporate yep. VP of Windows Phone. So he's sitting there drinking a Tango soda that <laughs> says Tango on it. He really was. And so I said to him, so, and I pointed to the cup, you know, like, uh, Tango? And he's like, I don't know, whatever do you mean? I've never even heard a code name Tango. Oh, jeez, like, oh, really? It's, it's <laughs> a soda. It's not a phone. Exactly. So do you, in, you know, okay, but just looking at these guys, do you sense from Microsoft any frustration at all in the speed with which this is going? Um, don't, don't they really? I mean, no, I isn't honestly, this their I, foot I, race? They seem, no, no, I, they, they seem like they are happy with the speed at which things are going. I mean, I, I expressed some frustration last year. I don't know if you recall this, at the slowness at which Windows Phone was being updated. But, I mean, I, I think by this point, the software is right there. You know, Mango's in good shape. Um, it does seem like the devices are kind of taking their time. It's not really clear 
you know, what devices are going to be where. I mean, we know now what's going to be on AT&T, but they think that's it. Like, we have no understanding of what's going to be on the other carriers or when. And in the case of AT&T, we don't know when either. Um, I do wish there was more clarity around this stuff. But, I mean, they publicly, at least to me, and Mary Jo can say if that's been different from Nokia World, but uh, they seem, you know, very happy with the speed and the way they've uh, taken, you know, remember they did jumpstart this from scratch. I mean, right. it's a complete, you know, completely new system came out last year. Um, I would say that Mango, by and large, irons out most of the big issues. Uh, certainly there are issues that remain, but I mean, there are issues with every, every one of the smartphone OSs. So I, I just wish the devices were out. You know, time's kind of ticking by well, that, here. That's you know, what I'm saying. October. That's what I'm saying. Doesn't yeah. anything Microsoft's saying, come on, guys, hurry up. <laughs> maybe, maybe, this, maybe this isn't a Christmas present kind of thing. You know, um, yeah. uh, uh, phones come with two-year contracts, so you people tend to buy them whenever that occurs, right? right. And, and I would be... You know, it's like you buy your wife a phone, you know, for Christmas. And, and by the way, here, here's an $80 bill every month for the next two years. Ha Merry Christmas. You know, it's kind of an odd gift. Um, so, you know, maybe it's not that important. But it does kind of, it seems to me like this stuff should be happening. So, uh, Well, and then uh, I would be a little frustrated uh, if I were them with Nokia. This uh, article today in Engadget, Nokia executive... Michael Halbher, who's uh, executive VP for Location and Commerce, said that Apollo is coming out mid-2012, and it will be a very different game to Mango. He's talking about Windows Phone 8 already. That's yeah. got to... Let's talk about that one at the end. That's my rumor of the week, and okay. I want to talk about that. Okay, save that for <laughs> later, but i got to yeah. say that that's probably a little frustrating to Microsoft to hear. I don't yeah. know. I, yeah. I, I come from this... You know, I, I come from the Apple world where... Nobody says anything ever, you know, and to have that kind of a leak seems like that could be damaging to any. Well, the good news is most consumers don't pay any attention to this stuff. It's just us hardcore geeks that are worried. Yeah. Um, however, let's talk about Windows Phone in year two because I see it's on your list. What must Microsoft do? What, is, what, what needs, you know, they're, again, they're playing catch up. What do they need to do to catch up? Actually, I'm not even sure. So it's interesting you said it that way. I, I'm not. Sh 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 they need to catch up with the marketplace, like from a sales perspective. Is that what you mean? Because right, I, I feel I, that they still need to catch up a little in features. But but maybe you don't feel really? that way. Defend defend that. That's all right. Maybe you. Yeah, don't I don't. Feel that I don't. Way. I don't know. I don't feel that way at all. Um, I think that. I think they've point, caught up. I think they've reached. I think yeah. I mean. Certainly, there are a handful of apps we don't have, you know, uh, Audible being one of the obvious ones. Like to see that happen. You know, Microsoft has expressed their understanding of that and that that stuff's happening. They, yeah, yeah. they have statistics showing that the top 10 apps on Android and iPhone are both well represented in the Windows Phone world. They have 35,000 apps. Um, they have superior integrated experiences. You know, they have Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn integration. You know, they have all this great stuff. Now, yeah, there's there, interesting there that holes. Android's copying that uh, People Hub pretty directly in uh, ice cream. Yeah. Sandwich. Well, no, it's uh, no surprise that both Apple and Android, I think, will begin taking features from Windows Phone because there's some good ideas there. Yes. You know, uh, even the Twitter integration, you know, you can't argue, well, maybe you can, that it's it's not necessarily a copy of what Windows Phone is doing. Um, but no. it's interesting that it's doing the same kind of thing. Yeah, it's, Windows. It's, it, I guess that you could say, and probably is the case, that it's, it's, it is the obvious thing to do at this point is to integrate all that stuff. Instead of having it be in silos, separate silos. Yeah, I, th I think so. But you know, obviously there are there are whole, there are functional holes in Windows Phone that need to be addressed. And I think when you look at Windows 8, even in this rough state, you see some ideas that maybe could be incorporated into a future version of Windows Phone. And if, if those OSs do come together as I sort of expect them to, um, that would be a natural. I, uh, just from a kind of a UI perspective, I don't like these. Long, long scrolling lists. You know, you have two huge lists of apps, you know, basically as the UI. I think the way that Windows Phone works, where you scroll from left to right and you have groups of apps, uh, is a much nicer way of doing things. And it works more like the rest of the phone. You know, all of the integrated hubs that they have all scroll from left to right, not up and down. So I think that's just a fit and finish kind of an issue. But. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to see more um, local apps, too. Like, you know, in New York, it's really frustrating because you hear all these people advertising, here's a new app for the iPhone that you can use in the, you know, Metropolitan Museum yeah, yeah. of Art. And nothing yep. like that on Windows no, I saw, Phone. I, you know, I saw that. I was just in D.C., same thing. Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know how you fix that problem without having users first, though. So that it's kind of a right. tough one. Um, yeah. yeah. The other thing, you know, one of the things I wrote about this week was that, you know, the, the prime benefit of the Windows Phone uh, OS is these integrated experiences, but they often don't go far enough, you know. So uh, if you're on an iPhone and you walk into a restaurant and you want to check in, you you have to have already installed and then find wherever it is on your phone, this like a Facebook app or a, a Foursquare app. And then from the Facebook app, you can do things like, you know, check into the location and you can uh, say, here, here are the people in my contacts list who are on Facebook that I'm with. So that will go out onto Facebook as well. And here's a chance to take a photo of the place and do all that stuff. So in Windows Phone, that functionality is built right into the OS. So you can check into a place, but you can't add a photo to it and you can't check in other people. So if you care about that kind of thing, you have to still go and install the Facebook app. And then you've just erased the benefit of having an integrated experience if you're just installing and finding an app as you would on the iPhone. And th there are little bits like that everywhere in the phone. And, I, and it's that kind of stuff. And I, I think of it as a fit and finish issue where it's a really good idea, but in many cases, they just don't go far enough. You know, I can integrate uh, the pictures experience with, um, you know, SkyDrive, which nobody uses. And with Facebook, which everyone uses, but not with, and with, well, actually, I'm not sure about Twitter. I don't think Twitter goes into the picture sub, but you can't integrate it with Flickr, which everyone uses, <laughs> you know? And it's just kind of a random, you know, in the first release, we have this integration. In the second release, we have this integration. But what we don't have is APIs where anyone could add this integration. And that kind of stinks. And that's, uh, I think, a key area where Windows Phone could open up in a better way to developers so that the owners of Flickr or the owners of whatever service can integrate their services into the OS instead of it having to come from Microsoft. And maybe, and hopefully, that's something that we see further down the road. Yeah, and, and, and then bu business ahead. features too, right? I mean, we're, we're yeah. still waiting for more business features like encryption, right? Everybody keeps bringing that one up and FIPS, uh, you know, FIPS compliance. And there's, there's a lot of things that business users are, are still waiting for. and. You know, Microsoft, yeah. when they came out with the phone, they said, this is a consumer-focused phone, you know. Um, the biz But they want to add the business features back in because that was a key market for them with Windows Mobile, and they don't want to just suddenly lose all those people. I, so I sometimes wonder if some of the missing features, and I would include encryption in this list, are missing simply because they were hard to do under this platform, which may, in fact, be temporary. That if they move to Windows 8, you've got Windows on the phone now, and Windows has encryption. You know, that they don't have to. So, you know, why bother going to the effort and time why, of creating something that's going to yeah. be, yeah, yeah that's going to be taken away anyway. You know, so that's just, uh, that's conjecture on my part. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> encryption is a tough one because encryption was around for years on Windows Mobile. Windows Mobile had the full s slate of Exchange Active Sync um, capabilities. And Windows Phone only has a subset of those. It's a good subset, and it's gotten better in 7.5, but it's not a complete it's not the complete list like Windows Mobile had, which is a little strange. We're going to take a break. Paul Therat is here from Dedham, Massachusetts. Mary Jo Foley from London, England. I love just saying that. I just want to say that. <laughs> you should be eating fish and chips or something. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I should. Well, she's at least We're bundled up. We're drinking a pint. <laughs> <laughs> we know her love for beer. I trust you've been, been to the pub. Oh, once or twice. Who's okay. counting? On occasion. On occasion. Yeah. We're going to uh, take a break, come back with more. We've got lots to talk about, including I'm curious about. In fact, I didn't think we'd get Paul today. I thought he'd be paying Battlefield. <laughs> but maybe maybe he's decided already. Maybe he's got a winner in the battle between the battle games. I'll never tell. Actually, I will tell. I guess it's in the list. <laughs> you have to tell. <laughs> Stay tuned, kids, for that thrilling, gripping answer. But first, let's talk about our friend's at GoToAssist, GoToAssist.com. It's remote support made easy. And the folks at GoToAssist were in the other day, and they showed me new features that are coming. And this thing is getting better and better. And one of the things I love about it is it's automatic. You get GoToAssist, you'll get all the new features the minute they arrive. So what is GoToAssist? Well, if you're in support, you probably know about it already. If you don't, my gosh, you've got to get the, the tool that uh, is the best uh, you know, it, it, it's like a surgeon, you know, you're not going to use a, a chainsaw when a scalpel is called for. Uh, when you're doing remote access, you got to use the right tool for your clients. 
Uh, and that's why you got to look at Go to Assist Express from Citrix. Uh, this thing is absolutely, hands down, the best remote access solution out there. Uh, for cross-platform especially. Yeah, all the operating systems have their own solution, but this is Windows, this is Mac, and there's new tools coming that make it incredible, even better. You can have eight sessions at once. You can have unattended sessions. You can have uh, an assay of what software is running on this remote system. It's very easy for your clients, too. You just send them a link, they click it, and uh, boom, you're in. I just love it. I want you to try it free for 30 days. Visit the website, go to assist.com slash windows g-o-t-o-a-s-s-i-s-t dot com slash windows and sign up you'll get 30 days free uh, enough time to try it with all your clients you get a sense of how they like it and i know you will like it two-way screen sharing integrated live chat 128 bit ssl end to end and for you free customer service 24 7. it's a package you just can't beat go to assist.com Slash Windows, we thank them for their support of Windows Weekly. Item number two, Microsoft. Now, I don't think we're going to travel this far in the future, but I see it says Microsoft <laughs> Office 2021. Clearly, I, a, clearly a typo. <laughs> I believe you mean. <laughs> I could be wrong. Although it still I'm, has the ribbon. What the hell? <laughs> I would, you know, but that's an interesting. that's an interesting thing. What would Office look like? In the year 2121, I mean, what would it, it 2012, uh, 2021 isn't that far off. It's uh, 11 10 years, years or 10 years. I mean, do you think, really I mean, flat. how much difference <laughs> can there be in a word processor? You ever get one of those well, little screen protector things? <laughs> it's not a typo. He's got the future built in. Is it Microsoft has been making these kind of videos for years. I, I find this, we should go back Wait a in time. This is a video? Yeah, it's yeah. their vision of the office productivity in experience. In 2021? Yep. Wow. Yeah. You know what bugs me about this video, too, is the car still have tires. <laughs> in the year 2021, cars will not have tires. Wow. Go, well, should I play the video? Would you, would you all like yeah, to? Yeah, you should play part of the video. It's, it's, it is very, it's yeah. interesting in the way that these videos often are. Let's watch this video, ladies and gentlemen. I don't hear anything. Should I be hearing something? I'm probably doing something wrong. Hotel shuttle. Oh, look. We've got augmented reality. It's built into her glasses. Why and I not into her eyeball, where it should be. <laughs> and the cars still have <laughs> tires. Wait a minute. I get a, I get, I'm not hearing the audio. Hold on a second. I want to I hear the audio on this. Let me, uh, let me pause it. Audio. It's like the... Um, uh, the Minority Report movie where you're like, wow, this is exactly what touch computers are going to be like. And then he pulls out the equivalent of a little USB memory right. card, hands it to the other guy, and you're like, really? Don't have a network, huh? We I mean, it's just, <laughs> you have that like kind of moment where yeah. it just blows. It, inevitably, it always happens, though, right? We had yeah. a Hollywood producer in yesterday. I meant to ask him. Uh, I noticed the modern movies, they don't really show the cell phones. Like, they're, they, you know, they don't want, because yeah. they realize that that is going to just not look the same. And that's what right. has really bit them in the past, a 10-year-old well, movie. I, I just watched a movie where the plot hinged on the phone lines going down so no one could reach anyone, and I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, my kids will never understand. What's, what was that line? That What, what was that? Was that like a, like a fishing line, or did they use that to hang laundry on? What was that? <laughs> What's wrong with this picture? Exactly. Yep. All right, here we go. Here we go. Now we're getting some audio. So she got in the cab. Should I rewind it a little bit? Let's rewind no, it. No, it doesn't matter. It's, no, all, it's, it's all just music. Just, all right. Yeah. She got in the cab. And this is, this is basically augmented reality everywhere, right? But see this little device she has? It's like one of those hard cards you get that has the screen protector on it for a smartphone. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I, I like, like that. that. I want one of those. It's like uh, an SNL skit about an Apple device where, <laughs> you know, it gets so ludicrously thin that you <laughs> right. lose it, you know? See through it. Yeah, it's like a contact lens. So, for those who are listening only, um, it, this is very Windows phony. Mm -hmm. uh, but well, the, the, the clerk has a little plastic translucent card that has the same kind of interface on it. She's arrived at the hotel now, and they've already communicated. You know, she's, they know she's here. Suddenly. It's a little, a little creepy, by the way. <laughs> Suddenly, yeah, we go to a subway. 
And again, he's got the five-minute focus. Get coffee. Question. Question. Quiver Olivier Project. Green Roof. Transcribed voice message. Can you approve the order today? Creating reply interface. Five, six, seven, forty liters. Place order. <laughs> I hope that's not coffee. No. <laughs> They're going to, like, dump a huge thing of coffee on his head. I think he's saying how much he has to pee, but I don't know. Oh, did Benefit. I say 40 liters? 40 liters. Benefit concert. Oh, somebody's playing. So now street musicians don't actually have to come to the subway anymore. They can play on a screen, and he donated through the card, and he's pledged him $1,000. What if they have an express my disdain option? <laughs> this guy has, in 15 seconds, spent over $100,000. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, now she's back in her hotel room. She's got a uh, Surface, apparently, yep. uh, and also on the wall a flat screen. All of I, I do. I do like the smart device integration notion that you have, even though these things are impossibly thin for us to understand now. You have basically a tablet. You have a phone, right? And that they interact with the thing that they're sitting that's, on. You know, they, that's really what's the, what we're talking right, about. That they would charge. Uh, what's the term for that? Conductively or um, inductively. Inductively? Inductively. Yeah. Inductive charging? Inductance charging. Yeah. It's neat. Um, yeah. I mean, although this is the holy grail of computing is have everything talk to everything else. And as long as there are all these stakeholders who hate each other, it's never going to yep. happen. So what you're going to have is all these devices. Yeah, cool. But none of them talk to each other. Well, you're talking about Microsoft. So actually what's going to happen yeah. is Apple will, in fact, do this in about five years. So, <laughs> you know. Well, here's a good example is AirShare and DLNA. You know, DLNA is a standard that's been around for a while. And then look, 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 look. You can buy that keyboard today. So that would be like us using one of those right. IBM Buckley, you know, keyboard keys. <laughs> the key, the keyboards. Well, it's very thin. Oh, look. Now, oh. How come Bob oh. uses that old-fashioned keyboard? Bob. He's so weird. Bob's still QWERTY. <laughs> He's still QWERTY. He's, Why aren't you talking to And he has a stylus. It? See? He had yeah, a stylus. Well, that's Microsoft. And, the, and by the way, the walls will be made of ivy from now on. <laughs> I do like the notion of wall computing, right? Like yes. full wall computing. Yes. That you could arbitrarily place whatever content up on the wall. I think it's actually pretty neat. I think pretty... Apple is like 90% there already with AirShare. Right now, the <laughs> iPad, you, the iPad, yeah, you send true. it to the screen. And the iPhone 4S, same thing. Yep, send it to the screen. But, but this is the irony of it. That's DLNA rebranded. So sure. it is an open standard, but Apple took it, changed it enough so that it's their own, and it doesn't work with anybody else. You need to have an Apple TV. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, this is a great idea, and I just wonder, is, is it going to be Microsoft that does it? Right. You know, the, the reason they do these things is to, like, kind of give their teams a thing to focus right. on right it's like you know this is the big idea right <laughs> can i point out that there's no microsoft branding in this entire video yet right <laughs> well you know by the way i think there's a reason for that their, their current design idea is based around the notion that the microsoft stuff gets out of the way right and that your content is what's at the center As and i think be. that that's what you're seeing is a kind of a futurization of that current ideal. Right. I bet if you were to look at a Microsoft video like this from five years ago, there would be little windows and office logos yeah. on everything. Yeah. Well, good for them, because consumers don't care. But I, And I like what you said, Mary Jo, that this is as much to inspire Microsoft as anything else. Yeah. They have this team called the Envisioning Lab. Um, that's part of Office, and they do these videos, like Paul said. They they do them periodically, and they take a lot of stuff that it, that's actually Wait a I really like real. This. Yeah, you like you like. I the like rest. this refrigerator. <laughs> I'm going back. Wait a minute. I got to show you this. So he walks up to the Sub Zero. Okay, now the Sub Zero is closed, and he taps the face of it. No, oh, it's hard to find it. He taps the face of it. It says, uh, "You don't have this. You don't have that. You need more of this." I like that interface. I want that on my refrigerator. Watch, watch. It, oh, it oh let's see calories. what's in it. It's a virtual. <laughs> oh, can't pause it. Oh, come on. I want it. Oh, it's so fast and I can't pause it. As soon as I pause it, Microsoft says no. So there is a version of this on YouTube, by the way. Yeah, though. I should just click the YouTube yeah. version. <laughs> I'm in the Microsoft <laughs> interface. <laughs> Stop it, Microsoft. Please, I beg of you. Anyway, I think that's really cool. Uh, I love yeah. these kind of movies. Yeah. Um, these, it's fun. Like I, Paul probably remembers, we saw some of these, you know, maybe like 15 oh, yeah, years ten, ago. Easily, easily 10 years ago. Oh, more, we've yeah. been seeing yeah. them for ages. That's what's fun well, yeah. about it. Yeah. What I want to do is go back and look at one of those now and see how it 
know. You know, whether any of it has actually come true. Yep. Are any of them on YouTube? Probably. They must be. I mean, I... The, no, the old Apple Knowledge Navigator uh, video that was made yeah. in the Scully era is, and um, in some ways that is a challenge to make something kind of, you know, uh, like yep. this. Um, yeah, I think that was the same idea. Same idea uh, yeah. Conceptually, yeah. like, this is the dream. Right. Let's head toward that. So if you... And it uh, helps inspire your customers, too, right? Like, if you show your customers this, they're like, oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about doing that. And, right. yeah, I, why don't I try to find technology that will put me on the path to do that? Right. This is YouTube.com slash office videos. They call it Productivity Future Vision if you want to see the, uh, the whole thing. We actually almost saw all of it. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. I like yeah. that. I love that Just stuff. 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 But I read science fiction, too. <laughs> I, I don't think I'd like the refrigerator thing where you press on what's in your refrigerator and the calorie count comes up. Is that what it was showing? Not the how much <laughs> is left? Oh. I would just show the salmonella count. Yeah, no, no. I want to know. Your daughter wanna... hasn't washed her hands and she touched right. everything in the fridge. Are you sure you want to eat that? You know, there is a movement afoot to show you the uh, environmental impact on everything. Even kind of an augmented reality thing. Um, yeah, because I don't feel guilty enough already. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, you You're mean... like this weighing oh, no, wait on me. Wait a minute. It's, the, uh, it's worse. It's not environmental impact. It's slaves. It's, the, it's like the slave count. How many people in virtual slavery were used to make this product? Right. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. Um, well, anyway, so this is, uh, it's not Office, or is it Office, the Office people? It's just Microsoft yep. 2021. It's, it's, yeah, Office Office Labs is a team. They're, oh, I and it's see. The envisioning, yeah. But they just call it Office Labs, because. It, but it's not just, oh, or is it's this? Under, it's under Office, yeah, because a lot office. of this is about, you know, Microsoft sees like the future productivity as being very focused around what the Office team's doing. Really? Yeah. As opposed to the operating system team? Yeah, because they're the ones doing kind of like the, the apps and the services that are what people actually yeah, it's, interact it's, with more than the operating system, you know? So, oh, yeah, so not, not to denigrate Windows, but I mean, it's plumbing, right? Right. Eventually, I mean, it, you know, the fun stuff is the stuff you do, you know, you actually do every day. It's apps. You know, the stuff that runs on top of it. Today, those are apps, yeah. Hmm. Um, you know what's 10 years old today? This week? The iPod. You know what else? It's 10 years old this week. This is actually kind of funny because you, uh, you think of the uh, iPod as being pretty old now, right? It's yep. been around a long time. We've just lived with it. for It's 10 years old. You know what else is 10 years old? Windows XP. Yeah, which of those do you think sold more copies? <laughs> Windows <laughs> XP by like five times, right? I bet they've sold a billion of them. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's apples and oranges. Or, uh, probably more than it. But what I'm saying, system. it's probably well over a billion. It's crazy. Ten years now, Windows XP. Usually, it wasn't ten years like the usual end of life uh, cutoff. In the Five past. years. I, I. What the heck happened here? They just but, they, they uh, keep extending it. Yeah. I, I, I know I've made the Jason from Friday the Thirteenth reference already, but it, it is that kind of. It's never. You can't stop him, and he keeps coming back. Yeah. 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 So but you, yeah, now the real, real, real expiration date is supposedly 2014. I think, isn't it? Oh. Right. <laughs> and by then, our refrigerators will be telling us how many calories are in our food. They will. Must well, I, I think from the good news standpoint is you really can't walk into a store and buy Windows XP on a PC anymore. Okay, so I think that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, it wasn't that long ago that you could, though. That's the irony. I know. I know. Well, and they, and they kind of had to keep it going artificially through the Vista stuff because right. Vista was poorly timed in the sense that just as this brand new version of Windows with all these great features came out, netbooks took off. Right. And netbooks are like really low-end computers that couldn't even run Windows Vista. Right. So, um, you know, they had to keep it around for that. But, uh, yeah, I, I feel like we're not, it, it's weird because it's kind of overstayed. It's welcome, you know. And I know every time I criticize XP, I hear from those people who still use it and love it and it does everything they need and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, seriously, it's, it needs to leave. I, I, it's, just, it's, it's just too much. It's time it's too long. for you to go. It has to be their most successful version of Windows ever. Yeah, I would think. But Just it's for also... because of its longevity. Yeah. 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 And, you know, but, yeah, uh, but... there are a lot of people who want to be off of it who can't, right? I mean, especially sure. business users. What is the uh, market share of XP still? I mean, do we know? It's, it, well, it's yeah. finally under 50%. So it's actually lower than 
not market share, used to share, is below, it doesn't really have market share anymore, right? Because they don't sell it. Right. Um, but it's uh, used to share finally did go below 50%. But that's just now. Yeah. Yep. But that's always, I don't think that's unusual. I mean, I remember when, when XP came out, people were still using Windows 3.1. Sure. So, you know, I mean. People were still using Windows 98 because they could play games and get right. better performance. Exactly. You know, they, exactly. it was that kind of thing. Yeah, so. exactly. And, you know, I, I, what they did that was weird, remember, they had XP, SP2, which they really could have called a different operating system because yes, it was. Yes, huge difference. Um, but so, yeah. you you know, it really the real uh, XP expired in, like, what what was it, um, 19... Service 94. Pack Zero, the original. <laughs> 2004 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. No, that's true. And, so, right. Um, According to Wikipedia, and, and, in August 2011, this is amazing... Yeah. XP, uh, and that's not so far ago. That's three months ago. Mm -hmm. XP had 35% of the market share and was the number one operating system in the world. Yeah, that's no longer true, by the way. It, this has shifted a little bit. Windows 7 yeah. then was about Windows 32%. Is now, Vista yes, about 12%. And then Mac OS at 7 or 8%, iOS at 5%, and Linux at 3%. So, boy, oh, boy, this is usage. Yep. That is a that is a success in any book, <laughs> dominant, huge. Sure. Yep. Huge. Although, uh, if you read the Steve Jobs biography, I always call XP the operating system that was too too good for Microsoft's own good, right? Do you, have you have you been reading this, the Steve Jobs biography? He's just so nasty about Windows. <laughs> <laughs> Although Bill's nasty about him. Sure. So it, go, it kind of goes back eat both ways. Well, no, but this this is like uh, any competitors. Yeah, you know, exactly. They what you end up at, with at the end is a mutual respect. You know, of course, when they're both active and in their early days, they kind of hate each other and uh, they go at it a little bit. But you know, if you follow sports, it's like any quarterbacks or basketball players or whoever that competed against each other sure. uh, grow to really respect each other later in life. Oh, I, I, think I think that that was clear at the All Things D interview, and then it says in the book uh, that Bill came to visit Steve in his, you know, final days. Yeah. And yeah, so they yeah, yeah. spent three hours reminiscing about the good old days. Sure. They could sit back a little bit and, uh, and, and look back. It's like, you know, Henry Ford and, and, and whatever his name is, Wolfgang Benz. I don't know. I, I can't think of it. When, when, you know, when Windows XP launched, uh, Microsoft was arguably still at the, you know, cresting the wave of their market dominance and all that kind of stuff and their, their industry power. Um, I think we talked about this previously, but, you know, people kind of forget how bad it was when it came out. It was really buggy. It had that huge security problem that actually caused Microsoft to stop active development of Windows for several months so they could fix it. And, you know, SP2 was the ultimate uh, result of all that work. Um, you know, we tend to sort of romanticize this stuff. You know, it's been around for 10 years, you know. Uh, I was looking at the photos I'd taken at the Windows XP launch in New York City, and one of the pictures was a, of a cow in front of a gateway store. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> you know, or Joe, Joe Belfiore with short hair. You know, so you, things have changed. Yes, they Whoa. have. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. A cow. Uh, yeah. Moving along, half of all Android handsets come with a Microsoft licensing fee. The estimate, we talked about this last week or a couple of weeks ago, was that Microsoft's making almost half a billion a year just from Android licenses. That must feel pretty good. Well, I'm starting to we wonder now. Yeah. Yeah. They, so now it's over 50% of all Android devices that go out. Microsoft is getting paid some amount of money wow. for that. That must um, gall, given how Steve Jobs feels about Android. He says Android stole everything from Apple. Must gall, yeah. must gall Apple a little bit. <laughs> They're paying Microsoft, but they stole it from us. <laughs> right. Microsoft provided a neat little inf infographic where they showed... The, the kind of legal action that's occurring against Android. And oh, yeah, Apple is yeah, part yeah. of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, they've got uh, HTC and I think Motorola and Sam must be Samsung in yes. court over Android. You know, so, I, I, you know, the Android story is obviously not complete yet, but I think things are going to be changing and uh, we'll see. But changing in the sense of Microsoft will probably make even more money on every one of these things. I have no idea. But <laughs> I, I think it's probably true that Directly, at least, Microsoft already probably makes more money on Android than Google does. Although, of course, indirectly, Google will uh, make a lot of money on the, on and the search and ads. And in the long run. 
Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. But still, half a billion. Eh, nothing to be sneezed at. True. That's um, going to be as good as their mouse business, you know. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, here's, here's the graphic. I found the graphic here. <laughs> it's kind of a mess. <laughs> uh, let's see. We yeah. got Microsoft suing at Barnes & Noble and Motorola Mobility. Apple. Yeah, suing. so you, you can see the companies that have not yet agreed to pay Microsoft. Barnes & Noble, Foxconn, Inventec. The red lines are uh, litigation. The oh, green oh. lines are happy, happy partners. They're paying a license yeah. fee. Oracle suing Only Google. Oracle has actually gone against Google so far. Yeah. It's like the missing piece of the pie. And that's actually over Java. Right. Mm -hmm. So Java use in Android, yeah. yeah. But still, I, I, but that's actually, I think about how core Java is to Android. Uh, that could actually be a big deal, Yeah. assuming they're correct. 55% licensed currently. And uh, in the U.S., 53% licensed. Wow. That's a... You know, I, I noticed this hasn't stemmed the flow of Android devices into the market. No. You know? Well, it's five bucks here, five bucks there. What's the big deal? Um, but is that roughly what it is? I think it's five bucks a handset. That's Probably. Like, it's it's, it's got to be in like that. that. Yeah. Right. Be. That's what people have said, and Microsoft never disputed it. So. Right. Yeah, it's it's, I mean, it's really true. interesting. I mean, one, on, on the one hand, I, obviously Microsoft considers this vindication. Look, these people are paying us. They're licensing us. We were right. Others might say, well, it's a shakedown, and it's cheaper to pay than to dispute, regardless of the merit. I think both of those statements are correct, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, we, I guess we won't know. Because, yeah. of course, well, as soon as you pay a license I, fee, you shut up. You're right. I am actually desperate to see one of these cases go to court. I would love to... Yeah have some documents over, you know, just made public, just so yeah. we can see what this is all about. I think these patents do need to be tested in court. And that's true whether you're talking about the Microsoft patents or the Apple stuff or whatever. I mean, I think all of these things need to be tested. And that maybe that needs to happen as part of a broader restructuring of how we do patents here do in the United States. you think that's why nobody's going after Google? Because Google would fight it. I mean, I think there's no well, question. Because Google, Google has a bottomless it. pit of cash right. and could fight them forever. <laughs> right. Um, right. That's why that's... Microsoft never fights Google directly, too, right? right. It's, it's totally like mutually assured destruction. Right. That's what yeah. it is. So, go after, so that in some ways supports the notion that it is a shakedown. Go after the guys who can't afford to do uh, anything about it. Yeah. I mean, know, if you really know. believe, or, as or, Steve Jobs or. did, that, that you were stolen from, go after the guy who stole it from you, not the fence. Well, we know we know a little bit about some of the patents, actually. Like, if you go and look at the uh, Microsoft versus um, Motorola Mobility, there's, mm -hmm. I think, 22 patents that are called out in that case. So we know, okay, these 22 are probably among the patents that Microsoft holds up to the OEMs and says, okay, we own this, we own this, we own this, you know. And they're all kind of minor things. Like, I, I forget some of them, but they're, but they're, they're not big things things like they're not saying you know hey um linux and android infringe on windows and like we own big chunks of your code it's not like that they're little tiny features that they're going and saying all these features together hey pay us five pay us five bucks a handset and right. you're all covered yeah okay so in a way you're right it's both it would not be difficult to imagine a situation where Google completes the purchase of Motorola and then enters into a cross-licensing agreement with right. Microsoft that would just cover carte blanche, if you will. <laughs> I mean, everything that both these companies do. I mean, it just seems like this has to happen. And maybe that's, and that would just put the end to all of this, right? That would be it. And we're done. Let's just make a big puddle of money and everybody takes a chunk of it and we'll just uh, go on with it. I think that's literally on. what this system is based around. <laughs> yeah. Profit sharing. Or, yeah. You know? yeah, it's kind of like that, isn't it? Yeah, it's a you know it's a it's a uh, income equity deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, we we talked it's like a about mutual fund. it's a mutual fund. I've been gone a week and I didn't miss a thing because Microsoft still may be buying Yahoo or is it Alibaba <laughs> or is it Google or who the hell knows? <laughs> Who's buying Microsoft this week? This could be a regular feature on the show or uh, uh, Yahoo this They're week. Yahoo, could be a yeah. regular feature on this show. I have a better idea for a feature. It's called, why would anyone want to buy Yahoo? Exactly. Are you guys nuts? You I'm looking crazy? for a company that has lots of users but is directionless and has no good technology. <laughs> is, there a, is there a company like that that we can think of? 
<laughs> I think you, once, you, once you've been doing this long enough, you realize that most acquisitions, not even some acquisitions, but most acquisitions are miserable ideas bound to fail. HP Compaq, AOL Time Warner. I mean, the list is endless. How many yeah. acquisitions really are any good? Look at all the companies that Yahoo bought, that Google bought. Um, well, the, the, see, usually in those cases, if, you know, Microsoft has bought a ton of small companies. Google has, Yahoo has, uh, even Apple has. You just don't hear about, you know, Apple tends well, to be Siri, very secretive. Siri was an acquisition. Right, but I mean, you know, I, I, they have a, a wide range of those companies. Sure. And, and the story is always the same. They want the, some precious technology and the person or handful of people who know all about it and can come into it's, the company. It, well, that's it, the thing. It's either the IP, the intellectual property of the yeah. company, or the and staff. Or the, Right. In the case of Apple buying Next, you got both. In the case the, of most of Facebook's acquisitions, it's the person. You know, they buy Dropio yeah. and it's Sam Lesson they want. But it seems like in every instance, virtually, that guy who started that small company, it, whether because he's an independent Can't kind of wait entrepreneur to get out of person, there. Whatever, yeah. yeah, he just, they always leave. Cannot you know? wait to get out of there. And, uh, you know, the people who, uh, you know, created Flickr, for example, probably bolted Yahoo as soon as they could. Absolutely. Uh, he, the people who created front page Absolutely. probably bolted Microsoft as quickly as they could. You know, you can come up with a thousand examples of this kind of stuff. So how do you, how do you handle a company the size of Yahoo, which has to have tens of thousands of employees? Um, what is their dominant product exactly? Like a sports web page, a, a a site about celebrities? I mean, what 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 are we what are you buying there? I don't I don't quite get it. Well, you, you know, the, this, the newest rumor, though, it, I think makes more sense than all the millions of other rumors we've had before. It Because the new rumor says all Microsoft really wants to do is bankroll somebody else buying Yahoo. Because okay. they're afraid if the wrong people buy Yahoo, ah. um, their search deal unravels. Who's the wrong so, people? Alibaba would be the wrong people then, right? Well, I, I don't know anything about Alibaba. <laughs> but can we all agree that the name Alibaba is insane and should not be the name of a company? In Chinese, it you means know? really great search engine. <laughs> it's like, you know, the, the, the <laughs> it's like a... A book from like Don Quixote or Alibaba. something. It just seems kind of no, like a, it's uh, the seven. Uh, what is it? Alibaba in the yeah. 70s. But yeah, you know uh, what but it's saying? a Chinese. Like, it's a Chinese uh, search company. So in China, right. it probably doesn't mean anything, and so it's just nonsense syllables like Google. You know, for all we know, Google in China means you know devilish Satan. I don't know. You know. Doesn't it? That's what it means in the Thorat household. <laughs> <laughs> Satanic search engine. Yeah. Um, so that, but I like that theory, Mary Jo, that it's really a defensive yeah. play. Yeah. It is. Uh, and well, yeah. So supposedly well, so that makes they don't Microsoft want to own not look ridiculous. Them. Right. Sorry. Right. They don't want to own them. They want somebody else to take care of it and own them. But they want to yeah. make sure whoever it is, they have a stake in it and they can influence the direction. So a content company like AOL, that'd be good. Yeah. I don't know if that would be maybe. good, but it would be logical. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the search uh, the, company the, obviously the would two be the wrongs worst. make a right, you know, right. The theory of mergers. Because Microsoft, you know, like, so Microsoft wants to keep the search deal. They want to keep selling this, selling do. search. That's the point for Microsoft. I, I believe that Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer literally used the phrase "dodged a bullet" when he <laughs> described how they didn't get Yahoo. Before. Almost, I, I believe oh, that's exactly how he said it. That's the word. He said, "We almost got it." I, 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 I. Forty-five billion dollars for, and then you cue like sound of flushing toilet. You know. <laughs> yep. And and by the way, I rest my case on acquisitions usually are stupid. <laughs> yes. It's like, um, you, you know, evil will always win because good is dumb. Good is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you know, acquisitions are dumb. Dumb. You know, you'd think these guys would learn. All right, let's take a break. Come back because I really am curious what Paul thinks of Battlefield 3. Uh, versus, we we really were, were curious, you know, uh, World at War. Is it called World at War? Is that what they call it? Who call no, it it's not. Modern Warfare 3. Mo it's just MW3. Yep. Versus Battlefield 3. Right. We will have a winner when we come well, back. Well, yeah, okay. I'm just trying to tease it. I don't know. You may hate it. I don't know. I know one thing. Mary Jo is going to take a break right now. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. I'm going down to the pub. I'll be back. <laughs> She's going to have a hard-boiled egg, a pickle, and a piece of cheese, and a big, big glass of beer. But first, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about backing it up. Back it up. Mm -hmm. 
it's called it's called carbonite, my friends, and it is in fact the way to back up. Now, if I were going to design a backup tool, uh, what would I put in there? Well, I'll tell you one thing: it'd be automatic. I don't want to think about it. It should just, you know, boom, it should just go. It could be, you know, uh, running all the time and just looking. Is there a change thing? Back it up. Yep. But another thing is, uh, you know, it's good to have a local backup, but the other thing is that a backup tool should also be backing up off-site, off, you know, so it's if there's a fire or a flood or, a, you know, natural disaster or somebody comes and steals everything, it's not next sitting next to your computer. It is safe. And that's why I love Carbonite. Automatic backup to the cloud, to the Internet. It's cloud storage. I know that's the buzzword. Carbonite's never, you know, really made a big deal about this, but you've always had this feature now that everybody's talking about it. Forget Dropbox. Carbonite does the same thing. It puts everything up there, and you can get anywhere. You just log on to your Carbonite account on a PC, on a Mac, on Android, on Apple, on, on uh, tablets. It's just it's right there. So it's cloud storage. Let's check off what we get here. Automatic backup, cloud storage, uh, restore anywhere, anytime. Uh, oh, Price? Unbelievable. $59 a year for everything on your on your internal drive, on your computer. Everything. It's very nice, very pleasant. It doesn't, doesn't slow your computer down, doesn't slow your internet access down. It just kind of slowly uploads. Now, I want you to try it. Here's the deal. You can try it completely free, no credit card, no obligation, nothing. Just go to Carbonite.com, use my, uh, actually use Windows. I was going to say use my name. If my name were Windows, you could use my name. Use the offer code Windows, and you'll get uh, two weeks free. And if you decide to buy, I want you to do the trial, because then when you buy and you use Windows as the offer code again, you'll get 14 months for the price of 12, making it even more affordable. Windows or Mac, $59 a year. Cloud storage, automatic backup. Encryption, yes. SSL, yes. All those features. Carbonite, you got to back it up to get it back, so do it right. With Carbonite. Call O Duty. Paul Therott is a Call of Duty fanatic. He's Prestige 4000. <laughs> whatever it is. Um, and and it is, um, okay, forgive me. MW3, is it out now? No. No. So you're, you're no, kind of. November 8. November 8. And Battlefield, it's out. It no. is out, yes. It Battlefield is. Battlefield 3. Have you been playing it? I have. Yeah. You like it? It's good. It's it's really good. It looks it's, good in the ads. It's a little too much like Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, this goes, I say this about Apple devices a lot. You know, why would someone want to buy something that looks just like an iPad but is not made by Apple? You know, why would somebody want to buy a game that looks exactly like Call of Duty but is called Battlefield? You know, I mean, it's the single player game is very much like Modern Warfare 3. It's, you know, it takes place modern day. It's, you know, in this case, it's an Iranian nuclear disaster, you know, war in the Middle East kind of thing. But it's, you know, if you set this thing up, like, here's the new Modern Warfare, you know, like, yep, that's what it looks like. I mean, it just looks and plays like that. And I just. Well, is that a bad thing? I don't know. I'm not really sure we need yet another one of these things. I think and, Electronic Arts should sue... I don't know who these people are. <laughs> for look and feel lawsuit. Or, yeah. Let's all sue each yeah. other. The only, the only thing they have... And I don't... I'm not as much of a fan of the multiplayer. Uh, I'll spend more time on that after I finish the single player. But I, it looks to me like... Unless Modern Warfare 3 is completely screwed up, which there is actually a small chance of uh, sim simply because Infinity Ward imploded and Right. They had to bring in two outside right. teams to finish the game. Uh, I mean, unless that happens, uh, there's no way this is going to be as good as, as Modern Warfare 3. I mean, I already want to go back to Black Ops, which is the previous Call of Duty game. And I'm just trying, I'm, I, can't, I have to keep reminding myself, no, 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 you got to just finish, just finish this thing. And it's not, a, it's not a really good sign for a new game that you kind of want to put it down, you know. So when we so, were at E3, this was kind of the thing, was the bat, was there was kind of this you know, rivalry between these two products, right? Well, the rivalry, rivalry such as it was, it, it, it has gone back and forth between different games. You know, uh, Medal of Honor was the original game, and right. they, these guys had a version of Medal of Honor last year that was okay, but not great. Right. Um, Battlefield 3 has a, or Battlefield rather, has a spin-off series called Bad Company, which I actually like quite a bit. Um, those games, you know, for a little while, oh, maybe this one is, you know, what's going to take on Call of Duty. So now it's Battlefield 3. You know, I don't know. The original version of Battlefield, like the original version of Call of Duty, was a World War II game. 
and uh, they branched out into the modern stuff, um, you know, as I guess everyone's doing. So it's it's fine. I, I would say it's better than Medal of Honor, you know, last year's game, certainly. And uh, the graphics are great. And there's some good sequences. You know, there's a sequence where you're up in a plane uh, taking out targets in the air and on the ground and stuff. And, uh, you know, there are tank sequences. And I guess the whole thing about uh, Modern Warfare 3 was it kind of you have boats you have planes you're now kind of out there well it's really immersive you know i mean yeah. this game this game is sort of like gears of war in that a lot of it is you're sitting watching a movie oh, you know <laughs> like no, this no. so there's a lot of sitting around and then you move scenes. to yeah, yeah, yeah and it's like yeah i think that's the new style of i don't want that you know, these video games it's okay it's fine i want to you know, shoot it's somebody. a great looking it is a great looking game now are you, you don't do the multiplayer or do you no, I do. I do. Oh, you do. Okay. I've been. I focus on the single player first. I have been jumping into multiplayer. It. It's. Uh, you know, we're we're hitting we're hitting a point with the Xbox 360, where we're reaching the technical end of the line. Yeah, I'm wondering. So, for example, the big issue on this one is that this game comes on two discs, and one of them is for multiplayer, and the other one's for single player. Oh boy, wow. Um, that's not a great system. Yeah. You know, having to swap discs out just to play yeah. a different version. Yeah. And I think that we're going to see a lot more of that over the next couple of seasons until this thing is finally replaced by the next Xbox. And, um, you know, that's not great. So that's, you know, there's, there's a problem there. Um, and I think graphically, uh, obviously, we're at the point where, you know, on a high-end PC, you can have a much better looking version of the game. Well, and that's one thing. On is, is that was what used to distinguish these games was the quality of the gameplay, right? I mean, the, the video. Yes, the, 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 I, we, Visuals. Right. So when you look at, we're not, we're, we no longer hit the point every fall where now this is right. the best game. Right. I, these games all look. They I look think we've the same. hit. Well, yeah, we've hit that point where, yep, that's as good as a game can look on the Xbox 360. It looks great, but it's not going up from here. And I think for it to go up from here, you either need higher resolution that's possible on the 360, better graphics and so forth. You need a new console, or you need a. Um, you know, a high, very high-end PC. There's even a feel almost of uh, this is, uh, there's a look. There's like an Xbox look, right? That yeah, there, there really is, yeah. You can definitely. really tell immediately yep. that it's an Xbox game. Despite yeah. the fact they're using different engines and all of that. It's very it's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I, I just bought another Xbox because we're going to have one in the in the studio for our gaming show with the Kinect and everything to set it up. I still think right. it's especially Kinect. I mean, it's just a fun, fun thing. <laughs> Fun. There's a battlefield simulator. Hmm. Chat room's telling me. I don't know what that means. Is there is there work on Xbox uh whatever we'll call it, three sixty five? Something 365. new. Three sixty five. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. actually I've heard that um not next holiday, <laughs> two years from now. There's a code name, huh? I heard Xbox, it was code name ten. Xbox twenty eleven. It's not, it, people have used the name 720. That's not the name. It's, no. it, I've heard it's code name 10. I heard it's going to be out in two years. And it, well, you know, you could make a case for it being 10 because uh, it probably it will be 1080p, right? Which the Xbox is not at 720p. No, it's 10, it is 1080. Oh, it is? Like, yeah, you can do 1080. Oh, I didn't know that. I know that's something the PS3 does. Yeah. Oh, I see what this is. This is a simulator that somebody built. Some British show built this Battlefield 3 simulator. I, I watched this. It was stupid. <laughs> Where you're getting it's in a tent and it's you know 180 yeah. degrees and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. yeah, I like to drink a beer while I'm, you know. Yeah, I don't want to be in no tent. Plants down or whatever, you know. I completely. Don't have to move around. <laughs> yeah. This is that's not the point of gaming. You mean you can't actually fly a, a plane with a hand controller? <laughs> well, I want to sit back, relax, and shoot some commies. Maybe this is my version of Ender's Game. You know, oh, maybe I'm, I'm actually saving the world, and no Shh. one appreciates or knows it. No spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. That's the biggest. That's the best twist in modern science fiction. It's it's right up with right up there with the well, best twist in modern science. Fiction. Modern now, because I'm thinking of Childhood's End, which has the best fix of uh, twist of classic science fiction. Huh. Huh? I'm just proposing that you can you can shoot that down like I'm, a commie in Battlefield that, Three if you want. But Mary I don't. Joe talks about System Center. And <laughs> yeah, you mull that <laughs> because it's time to move on to an even more gripping subject. The test builds for System Center 2012 Woo are finally here. They are finally here. <laughs> Forget Battlefield, everybody. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, Damn yes. you, Mary Jo Foley. <laughs> All you System Center fans out there, this has been a big week for you because there are a ton of new test builds out for all those different products that comprise System Center 2012. There are like 10 of them. I can't even remember all of them. They all have code names. They're all on different ship schedules. But right now I'll tell you which ones are out so you can go download them tonight. And when you're not playing Battlefield, you can go download System Center. You can get a configuration manager release candidate. So that's almost done. That's the thing that's going to let you manage the iPads and the iPhones and the Android phones. So it's pretty cool, actually. Um, Endpoint protection, um, the Forefront product, I think, is also in release candidate phase at this point. You can download that. Um, System Center Service Manager 2012 Beta is now out, which wasn't out before in, in a test form. Um, and System Center Orchestrator 2012 release candidate. So all, there are all these things coming out, um, all these point product components of the System Center family. And a lot of them are going to be released to manufacturing or released to the web before the end of this calendar year. But the actual launch, like Microsoft's going to have a big System Center launch, um, it's going to be early next year. So all these point products are going to be out. They're going to wrap that all up and launch it next year. So if you're into System Center, there's plenty of good stuff to download this week. Go get it. And that's exactly the difference between boys and girls. <laughs> boys want to play games where they shoot commies. Girls are really interested in enterprise software. I, that's just it. That's the battle of the sexes right there. I don't one, one think you friends. actually understand the differences. <laughs> no. one, of my, one, of my, one of my girlfriends here in New York runs GameGal.com. She loves to shoot things, too. Oh, so it's that's just, great. Not all girls. <laughs> well, I want EnterpriseGal.com. Where is that site? Man, I gotta, I gotta go get that domain. <laughs> Enterprise chicks <laughs> are hot. <laughs> We're gonna take oh. a break <laughs> when we come back. Oh, time for a break. <laughs> time for a break. I need to cool off. Uh, we're going to come back. We've got a tip of the week. We've got a software pick of the week, an enterprise pick of the week, a rumor of the week. And I kind of tipped that and I apologize. Uh, and all of that is just ahead. But first, let me tell you uh, how to take your old stuff and turn it into gold. New stuff. Really good new stuff at Newegg. We all know Newegg. It's a great place to go to get the uh, latest stuff. They have hundreds. How many products? I think I have a count here somewhere. Um, Newegg has 84,000 products. Holy cow. 1.9 million plus customer reviews. Uh, I just haunt Newegg. They say guys don't like shopping. Oh, yes, we do. And how about this? Get rid of your old gadgets. Get some cash to buy a Newegg. Newegg is partnered with Gazelle to help you empty that gadget closet to make some room for new stuff and help pay for it too. A fast and easy way to get a new egg gift card for the value of your used gadgets. They buy cell phones, video games, movies, laptops, MP3 players, digital cameras, PDAs, gaming consoles, GPS devices. Boy, those are those are obsolete. That'd be a good thing to sell there. Here's what you do. You go to newegg.com slash trade, click the blue button and you just enter in the electronics uh, you want to sell let's see how about um that droid bionic i wouldn't mind getting rid of that thing uh droid, there it is motorola droid bionic the bionic 2 is coming out maybe you've decided you want the, uh, the the galaxy nexus instead hello there we go so what you'll do is you pick the device and of course they've got them all and look at this graph too that shows you that as the price has changed Makes a call, yes, free of water damage, yes, I hardly used it, I have all of the above, we're going to click the box, calculate, and there you, whoa, $277, now here's the deal, you throw that into a box, any old box, and you keep going because you want to get all your stuff together, and, uh, and once you do, you print out the mailing label, yes, they pay your postage, send it to them, and then they send you a, a credit for Newegg, good deal, huh? 20 product categories, 200,000 unique gadgets, all this old stuff you don't need anymore, digital cameras. Round them up, get them out of the house. And by the way, if they're worthless, 
They will recycle them responsibly, which I like too. And you will get a new egg gift card for the cash value of your electronics. But don't delay. You look at these graphs and you realize the longer you wait on some of these things, the less they're worth. So get rid of it now. Get rid of it now. Newegg.com slash trade. Take it from a geek when you know you'll new egg. And we thank them for their support of Windows Weekly. Let's start with our tip of the week. I'm guessing this is from Mr. Paul Ferrat because it's mangoized. It is. Um, there's currently no way to take a screenshot on Windows Phone, which drives me insane. And it made writing the book very difficult yeah, since bad. it comes with hundreds of screenshots. So what did you do? Um, I did a combination of things. There were there were some apps that were available through the emulator. There were some apps that were available through uh, leaked ROMs in the emulator. And then there was some stuff that you simply had to um, use Photoshop and, and just emulate wow. on your own, if you yeah, will. But yeah. so wow. um, none of this stuff helped me in time for the book. But by the time uh, this past summer came around, there was a third party utility which allowed you to take screenshots, but then that doesn't work in Mango because Mango gets rid of the ability to do native code. Right. So uh, somebody has released a new uh, screen capture utility. Um, I have instructions. I actually just wrote about this on my website today. I have the instructions in the show notes as well. But basically, you need a developer unlocked phone. Um, currently, that costs $99, but um, Rafael Rivera and uh, Chris Walsh and Long Zeng had do the. Um, uh, the Chevron WP7 stuff, and they're going to have a 9 or I think it's a $10 version that will develop or unlock your phone. And so there'll be a cheaper way to do that. And then you'll be able to basically get this app onto your phone uh, once it's unlocked. So I have instructions on the website rather than uh, step through them. You can, you can read it there. So is that, that's kind of like rooting or jailbreaking to develop or unlock it? Well, it's legitimate. I mean, Microsoft's, uh, you know, Microsoft provides a way to do it. You know, if you sign up for their developer program, you can develop or unlock right. a phone. Right. The point of doing it is to provide a way to sideload apps onto the phone. Otherwise, you have to get them only through the marketplace. Right. I get it. I get it. I get so it. this lets you... Uh, so it's just like, that's what jailbreaking does. It allows you to sideload. Yeah, cool. but it's But it's legit. Right. I understand. It's a yeah. Microsoft yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, cool. Very nice. Screen yeah. captures are nice. That's one of the things... It's funny. The story on the iPhone, I was told is that it was in the beta software in the very first iPhone, yeah. and they, were, they took it out. And David Pogue, who had been either writing a book or was working on his Times review for it, got the final release. He said, what the hell? <laughs> you took out the screenshot. And Apple said, well, yeah. He said, can yeah, you put it back? I need it. So it's really the David Pogue feature. Uh, and it's now they made a big deal about how Ice Cream Sandwich is going to have it on Android. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, I mean uh, after the announcement of this phone, I, I flew out to Redmond and sat down with those guys. It was the first question I asked. I said, I'm going to write a book. I need screenshots. And they're like, oh, yeah. Hmm. You know, they had no real good way of doing it. So <laughs> hmm. Still, still don't. Hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, this thing works well. So as long as you can develop on your lucky phone, it, it, it works very well. And it's fun. Paul's put a lot of uh, images. I guess he just kind of went crazy on his, Look <laughs> on his page. Uh, for all the things, there's his gamer, gamer tag. It's the Politar. The Politard. Uh, he's wearing a Politard, I believe. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, very, it's tight, kind of a very tight fitting there, Paul. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is good. This is good. So, yeah, just, just to prove it, you can go to Norwood, Mass., and have great Chinese food at the Yangtze Express just around the corner. Just around the is, corner. Is Denham and Norwood, are they like sister cities? I mean, uh, or is it is Norwood another name? For Norwood Denim? was originally North Dedham. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I know you're not. Westwood was West Dedham. That's why. And I'm Canton enjoying. was Canton. That's why I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Software pick of the week, Paul. Or no, is this a MJ? Is this a Mary Joe? This, this is uh, this is mine too. So oh, last yeah. week while you were gone, I yes. recommended something called Bins, which isn't free. Mm -hmm. It was a way to, via a single button on the Windows Seven taskbar have a little pop-up that had more buttons so you could have more stuff in one space. So a number of people pointed out to me that there's a free version of this called 7 Stacks. It's not exactly the same from a look and feel. I actually do prefer the way Ben's looks, but this one is free, and of course that will be interesting to people. So um, you should check out 7 Stacks if you're looking for something like this. For like Windows 7 version. only, yes? I believe so, yeah. yeah. That's neat. It uses yeah, it's just a way to have a kind of a fly-up menu type thing instead of just you know instead of just launching one app you could have a collection of apps and it apparently it's like the stacks feature in 
Mac OS which X. I turn off immediately. But yes, there you go. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't. I just you know. I, but, I don't use it, so I don't yeah, know. But. Yeah, I'm not crazy about it. Uh, now, now we're through the cheesy consumer stuff. <laughs> Let's get robust with the Enterprise Pick of the Week. Yes, and just to keep a fun Enterprise Gal theme going, I'm going to do another System Center pick this Yay. week. <laughs> Woo! Um, System Center App Controller. So this is a case, you know, we always talk about this on the show. It's like, why are Microsoft code names so much cooler than the product name, right? The code name for this thing was Conchero. Ooh. The product name is System Center App Controller 2012, uh, which awesome. doesn't even really tell you a lot about what this is. But um, what it is is a dashboard kind of an application that's going to let people um, manage both their public and their private cloud configurations and services. So that's actually really interesting that Microsoft's going to have this one unified dashboard kind of feel. Um, and it is now in beta as of this week. That's why I made it my pick this week. Um, so, yeah, go get this one, too, when you're not playing Warfare Games. <laughs> Conchero. <laughs> you're not even remembering the name. Conchero. Battlefield Warfare something. Yeah, whatever it was. But <laughs> That thing that Paul does. That thing that Paul shoots. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. No shooting. Yeah. Yes. But, yeah, Conchero. Conchero is Chase. out in base. <laughs> we have made That's my something for you. We call it Conchero. <laughs> Wouldn't that be an awesome product? From Microsoft. Chase. Conchero. And now, this rumor of a week, which I'm so sorry, I kind of I kind of telegraphed about... No worries. Not about Mango. Not about Tango. No, it's all about Apollo. Apollo. Apollo, the thing that follows Tango, which follows Mango, if you're keeping score at home of code names. So uh, at, at Nokia World this week, Engadget uh, talked to a guy from Nokia whose name is Michael Halber, and he's the head of location and commerce. And he blurted out that, hey, guess what? Apollo is going to launch in mid-2012. So that's oh, the rumor. Yeah, yeah, caramba. Yeah, I and I got to say, I'm very skeptical of this rumor. Oh, good. Um, or I would say maybe in Finland their calendars are different from ours. Um, because it's a fiscal calendar. It's a, yeah, maybe it's a fiscal calendar. <laughs> maybe it's Nokia's fiscal calendar. It will be <laughs> available in fiscal Nokia Finland year 2012. I, the reason I'm so skeptical is, okay, um, if, if, this, if Apollo really is what people think, which is – you replace the Windows embedded kernel with Windows 8. Won't we have to have Windows 8 RTM oh. before uh, oh, they, if they could use that kernel? Maybe. So, or so really, is that what Windows Phone 8 is going to be, is Windows 8? Maybe. We, that's a rumor, too. But, um, you know, maybe. maybe. And, and if it is, then I would think they'd have to have Windows 8 be finalized before they could take the guts of Windows 8 and right. make that part of the operating system for the phone just thinking that but you know when i when i first heard about apollo everyone said think late 2012 um so you know unless unless what apollo is has changed drastically i i'm skeptical we're going to see it rtm that early what do you think paul i think too early the only hope i i have here for that to happen is that rumor that we keep talking about this notion that maybe PC makers are going to ship Windows 7 tablets that will be upgradable for free to Windows 8. You know, that it will really be a Windows 8 tablet, that this is their way to, you know, prevent that problem where Windows 8 ships too late in the year. So um, yeah. do we know when Nokia's fiscal year runs from? Do we know the, no. uh, I don't know. It doesn't yeah, you know, the reason, I know, the reason he said it, which kind of tells you something, is Nokia really wants Microsoft to include NFC um, uh. support in Windows Phone, and so they're saying, we need to wait for them to do that. And so I was wondering, why can't they do that in Tango? I mean, is that too big a feature to make it into Tango? Um, because Tango, hard. as is far as we know, isn't even out yet, right? So, mm. yep. yeah, hmm. I think I think it's a, it's a rumor. Um, maybe there's some grain of truth in it. Maybe it gives me hope that Apollo actually will ship in 2012, 
because some people had been telling me, yeah, it might slip into 2013. So I, th I think it's likely we'll see Apollo, which is Windows Phone 8, in 2012. But I think mid-year, unless they're thinking of some other mid, is pretty I, I, unlikely. It takes them a year to ship a release, right? right. Um, if Windows 8 really is Windows Phone 8, I, I can't imagine it would happen that quickly. Unless they've just yep. been working on it concurrently the whole time. I, I just can't imagine Which I think they have. Case. I think yeah. they've been working on it for a while. Um, because, you know, we heard the code name a while ago. So I, I think they've actually yeah. been working on it. But I don't know. It would be nice if it could come out earlier rather than later. Um, and it would be really great because then they might have holiday season phones next year that would be Windows Phone 8, right? Hmm. Hmm. So, yeah, rumor. It's a rumor, but interesting rumor. I, I don't think it's a uh, – let me just look before I say this. <laughs> I, I was – let me just make sure. Well, I can't find it. But there's a Windows Phone event in November. Yeah. What, in New what, York. Oh, that's interesting. Sure. That's Tango. Uh, that's no. Tango. No, it's for the current version. But I, I wonder if that's not going to be the launch time for the U, you know for U.S. phones from Mango. Mm. Oh, they still uh, haven't launched those? Well, they're not out. Oh, I didn't realize that. So maybe maybe that's mm. a... We were talking about the, you know, when was this stuff going to happen? And maybe, maybe that's the time. Yeah. So that's like Titan and Radar and all that, you mean? Yeah, the AT&T phones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. and, and hopefully others. <laughs> <laughs> but Nokia, not till next year. We see clarity. Yeah. Sorry. And, mm -hmm. and, and and if it's not till next year, then Apollo will be. In a, in a, I mean, come on, that doesn't make any sense. It comes out. Nokia is Lumia eight hundred comes out in February, well, I, I and Apollo comes out in June. Tango, Tango is to Mango, I believe, as you know, Nodo was the original release. So it's it is it something is. that occur February March ish. You know, um, and it's a small release. Yeah. Tango's a little thing. It's not a big release. Yeah, like so I, it's not inconceivable. Both of those releases could happen next year. It's not. We're losing Leo, I can see. <laughs> um, before we go, uh, because I did not have a, uh, we didn't have an Audible pick this week, I just wanted to point out, uh, these things are not on Audible, but in addition to the Steve Jobs biography, there, there are two other biographies, uh, tech-related, that came out this week that are very interesting um, and people might want to check out. Um, one is a, a biography of Jeff Bezos and Amazon called Ooh. One Click, which I've only just started. Um, and the other is one I haven't started. It's actually an autobiography, but it's called Making a World of Difference. I think it might only be available on the Kindle, but I'm not positive. But it's by Kai-Fu Lee, who, of course, was that Microsoft uh, online services researcher guy who went over to Google to start Microsoft's Google, I'm sorry, uh, Microsoft's China uh, Research Center. And then he jumped ship to Google and the lawsuit went back and forth and all that. Oh, so, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, apparently he has some interesting... Uh, commentary about Microsoft in there, so, um, and not of a positive variety. So that might be worth checking out as well. Kaifu Lee, Making a World of Difference. And uh, what's the name of the Bezos book? Because I, you know, I have to it's say, called... the, uh, you know, Bezos reminds me, you know, now that I've read the Steve Jobs biography, I feel like Larry Ellison, Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, they're all kind of uh, similar. Nuts! <laughs> So I want to read this one. Bezos is probably a nicer guy. <laughs> uh, you know, I Just maybe by... not. Keep reading the book and let me know. Okay. Although it'd be hard to be a worse person than Steve Jobs. Yeah, but... it's called One Click. One Click, okay. And then this is uh, Making a World of Difference. Is actually Kindle? I think it might only, only be. it looks like. Yeah, I don't think. I see the yeah. Kindle edition. I, I thought I saw a hardcover. Anyway, interesting. It's probably self-published. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. you know, that could be. That's exactly got, what it, it is. It has kind of a, I mean, I haven't seen font usage like that since my daughter did a school project, you know. Wow. <laughs> like it's kind of a strange uh, choice, but. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. yeah. Mary Jo Foley, have a great time in London. When do you come home? I'm coming home Sunday, so thank you very much. You're having a good time? Is it fun? Yeah. Yeah, yep. London's and, a great city. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Definitely. We had a fun tweet up on a Tuesday. Got to meet a bunch of my uh, followers on Twitter. And tons of Windows Weekly fans were there. Oh, good. Yep. Great. We have fans in jolly old England. Mary Jo can be found at allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's where her blog is. She'll be blogging, I'm sure, more about Nokia World and 
and enterprise computing for those of you who care. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'll, I'll I be love, strafing that from the air. <laughs> I, love to, I just love to tease you about it. All about Microsoft.com. Thank you, Mary Jo, for being here. We appreciate it. Yep, thank you. Paul Therat is busy strafing London in Battlefield 3. Uh, you can find him at the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. And, of course, his book, Windows Phone Secrets, is out right now in stores. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you all for joining us. We do the show uh, every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern at twit.tv. That's 1800 UTC. But you don't have to watch live. It's fun to watch live because these guys like to swear at each other and they tear at each other. It's really great. And we just cut that all out in the final day. That's what we do. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you want Cats the expurgated, bowdlerized download, that's available at twit.tv as well in audio and in video. TNT coming up this afternoon at 2.30. As always, Monday through Friday for the latest tech news. I'm sure we'll have news from Nokia Award as well with Tom Merritt, Sarah Lane, and I as actor. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next week. It was weekly.